Hello and welcome to the third part of the series about XT IDE. I'm sorry that it took so long to make another part, but I ran out of clean EEPROMs and my UV eraser broke. So I had to repair it first to continue on this topic. Unfortunately, in times of pandemic, it seemed to be difficult to find a UV lamp for a normal price. So I had to order it from China. After waiting for more than a month, the lamp arrived broken and it took another month to get a replacement. Eventually, I got my EEPROMs clean again and could move on. In the last two videos, I have been talking about XT IDE project, explained a little bit of how it works and how to use it. If you didn't see that videos, I highly suggest you see them first. Last time I ended up demonstrating how to misuse an ISA network adapter to be able to boot from a compact flashcard on a retro PC. As I told, I cheated a little bit and I didn't go into necessary details of setting up the network adapter. In this video I'd like to talk about these details. Let's take this ISA network adapter and use it as a boot helper for our XT IDE Universal BIOS again. I'll put this XT IDE EEPROM into the socket, which was prepared in the same way as I've shown in the last video. I have a 486 mainboard with integrated IDE controller here, which refuses to boot from any compact flash and from almost all real hard drives which are larger than 500 megabytes. It would be a perfect candidate for XT IDE, so let's just insert the card into the ISA slot, fire up the machine and see what happens. And as you can see, nothing happens. We are getting just a black screen. But why does this happen? Remember how I told in the last video that the BIOS ROMs are all accessible in the memory address between 768 and 896 kilobytes? Just to recap, from the XT times, the architecture allowed to use almost complete first 640k of memory for the applications. The 128k of memory addressed between 640k and 768k were reserved for video memory and the next 128k were available for the expansion ROMs like IDE BIOS, Video BIOS, Network BIOS or things like XT IDE. Let me remove the network card again and boot into the mainboard BIOS. The interesting thing about this mainboard is that it shows which ROMs and at which addresses are available. This is not common to be shown in a BIOS, but for this showcase is just perfect. This mainboard has an integrated video card with an own BIOS ROM located at C0000 address, which is obviously 786,432 bytes decimal, or simply 768K. Such ROM can be everything between 8 and 64K and Dependent on their sizes, multiple ROMs can be squeezed into the given 128k of address space. As you can see, this mainboard shows that there is a 32k ROM located at address C000. A mindful watcher may ask here, why do we have only three zeros? Well, this is due to so-called real mode addressing of an x86 architecture where the addresses are shifted around to get to the real memory address. This is a separate and a very interesting topic, but for this video, let's just assume that the last zero is just dropped in the representation because of, well, reasons, you know. So even if you see a four digits long hexadecimal address in this video, just think as it would have another zero in the end. And if you're really curious, just dig into real mode addressing on x86. Back to the network adapter again, which we are using for our XT IDE Universal BIOS hack. It has multiple jumpers where you can set up different settings. Currently, we are only interested in the address setting and will just ignore the other jumpers. On the back of the network adapter, we can find a table for the jumper settings, where one means jumper is short and 0 means jumper is open. Currently our jumpers are set to 10000 which means C0000 
This is exactly the same address which the main port is been using for the video adapter BIOS, if you remember. We obviously have an address conflict, and this is the reason why we have black screen trying to start the machine using these settings. Okay. We know that the main board is trying to load its video BIOS at C000. And we know it is 32K large. This means that we have to put the XT IDE BIOS at address which doesn't intersect with the video BIOS address space. C000 plus 8000, which stands for 32K, equals C8000 or 800k with other words, so our ROM will be available at 800 kilobyte address. Let's set up this address, setting the jumpers on the network adapter to 10010. Put it back into the mainboard and see what happens. By the way, C0000 is a common address for video bias, and you should try to avoid using it for something else, or you'll run into conflicts on many machines. The computer started and in the BIOS we can see that there are two ROMs now available. 32K video ROM at the address C000 and another 12K ROM at address C8000. The last one is our 12K AT version of the XT IDE ROM. Looks good. Now let's insert our Compact Flash IDE adapter and try to boot from it. Remember always to deactivate all hard drive settings in the original mainboard BIOS. As you can see, XT IDE found our compact flashcard and booted from it without an issue. Using the tool Check It under DOS, we can validate the memory layout and check our ROMs. Here is the video BIOS, and this is the XT IDE. So far, so good. Now to the main question. Can we use any network card to run XT IDE Universal BIOS? Well, in theory, yes. We can use any card. In practice, on the other hand, there are some things to consider. The best is if you can get a non-plug-and-play network adapter, like this one, where you can set up everything just by using jumpers. However, the most network adapters out there are plug-and-play without any jumpers at all. To set up the ROM address, you have to use the original drivers and utilities, which are sometimes not easy to find today. And to be able to use them, you have to boot into DOS first, maybe using a floppy drive or something similar, with the required network adapter utilities on it to be able to set up the BIOS ROM settings. Anyway, here I have a pile of different ISA network adapters. I could find the appropriate drivers for the most of them, however, some drivers were just not findable and some cards refused to work even with the seemingly proper drivers. As an example, let's take a look at this very good and widely used 3COM network adapter. It is probably important to say that by using a network adapter as a XT IDE Universal BIOS host, it still doesn't lose its abilities of a normal network adapter as well. That's why I suggest to choose something fast and reliable like this one. The software for this adapter is very easy to find, it works perfectly for DOS and Windows. I will insert the 3COM network adapter, boot into DOS and start the 3COM configuration utility. Here, if you go into NIC configuration menu, you will find a ROM boot entry set to disabled. You can change the setting appropriately. The actual size of XT IDE ROM is 12K, but ROMs must be 8K aligned, so we assume 16K size. Now to the address. The video bias in this machine is located at the address C000 and is 32K large. I set the address to the other network adapter using jumpers to C8000. I could use the same here or take another one, but let's go for D0000 because we can. When we save the settings, we'll be written into a tiny settings EEPROM on the network adapter permanently. And the network card will also access the XT IDE at address D0000 even if you put the card into another computer. 
And here you go. After rebooting, the XT IDE BIOS ROM is being loaded from the 3COM network adapter, like it's being done with the other non-plug-and-play one with the jumpers. Here you can see the address D000 reported by the XT IDE software, which is exactly the one we set up in the network adapter. Using network adapter as host for XT IDE ROM is a good choice. It extends the abilities of your IDE controller and gives you network features with the same extension card. However, if you stick with XT 8-bit slots only, it will be quite an effort to find a compatible network adapter. Some 16-bit ISA cards do also work in 8-bit slots, but I never saw one which also had RJ45 connector. Without such a connector, a network card is kind of useless in a modern network. So, what else can we use? The best is for sure an integrated IDE controller with a BIOS socket, like the countless XT IDE 8-bit cards. However, I found many of such 8-bit HDD Sheriff cards in a pile of scrap I bought some time ago. These cards were used to protect hard drives from being written on a public PCs. These cards have some additional logic ICs which actually can be removed and used for another project, but with the PLA and EEPROM socket they can be perfectly used for XTIDE BIOS and these cards even have two jumpers to set the address. I tested these cards in XTs and ATs and they work like charm. As you can see, there are many ways how you can use XTIDE on your retro machines, so if you need something like this, I hope this was helpful and inspiring for you. There is even more to say about XT IDE and its capabilities besides booting from a usual IDE. If you want, I'll do more videos about it in the future, so just as always, leave your likes, dislikes or comments below and I hope to see you on my channel again. Thank you and goodbye.